Hello, my name is Luca Reale, and today I will be talking about universal differential equations model performance under wrong assumptions. My supervisor was Dr. Giulio Dalla Riva from the University of Canterbury. So first of all, what is a universal approximator? A universal approximator is an object capable of approximating any function to some parameter size limit. Examples of universal approximators in lower dimensions include Chebyshev series or Fourier series. However, it turns out, according to the universal approximation theorem, that neural networks are universal approximators for any Rn to Rm function. So now that we know that, what is a universal differential equation? A universal differential equation, is, or UDE, is a differential equation defined, partially defined, or fully defined by a universal approximator. For my research in particular, I looked at UDEs of the following form. Uh, dx over dt is equal to some specification k dependent on x and t, plus our universal approximator, in our case, a neural network. Uh, our specification doesn't necessarily have to be correct, and we can also have incorrect specifications, and uh, we will look and see how incorrect specifications affect model performance. So first of all, how do we solve these CDEs? Well, first, we need some training data uh, to train our neural network. Once the neural network has been trained, we obtain our solution to the UDE problem and use that solution to predict future observations. So uh, here we have uh, in red the data generated from the following differential equation. And we have our universal differential equation, which is defined like so, with the sign of t as our specification. We trained the neural network from 0 to 1.5, hence in blue. And then we use that solution to predict the data from 1.5 to 3. So how exactly did, did we do this? So for the research, I looked at UDEs with correctly specified k, unspecified k0, and a wrongly specified k star. I then used the solved UDEs to predict data from 0 to 3 at a time step of 0 0.1. I then added the absolute difference between the real value and our predicted solution and used the total as a measure of model performance. Uh, so here uh, we have a few examples. So in red we have the data generated from the following differential equation. So here as a specification we have e to the power of t, which is uh, exactly the differential equation from which we generated the data from. Uh, hence we get a very good model performance. Uh, here we have no specification, uh, hence we don't get as good of a model performance, but it's, it's an all right model performance. And uh, here we have sine of t, which is an incorrect specification, sine of t is nowhere in this differential equation. Uh, however, our, our model isn't too bad, or, or at least it's not clear which one of these two models is necessarily better or worse. So how did we implement this in Julia? Well first we had to define our differential equation from which we obtained our data. So we did this with the following equation here. Uh, we defined it on an interval from 0 to 3, and we put the initial condition that at, uh, at, at t naught u naught is equal to, uh, at t naught, uh, at t equals 0, u is equal to 0. We then defined our problem here, and uh, we then solved our ODE problem here. Here we defined our UDE. So first of all, we defined our neural network, which is our universal uh, approximator. Here we defined the UDE. So again, we have our UDE, our universal approximator here. Here we have our specification, which as we can see is a wrong specification because it's not in this differential equation here. And here we have our universal approximator. And then here we initialize the problem. Now here we train the neural network. So to do that, I use the diffiqflux package, and I use SciML train. We calculated the loss function, which is just the sum of the absolute difference between our estimated solution and the generated solution that we generated with our ODE back back here. Um, we then use the neural ODE callback, which simply iterates through this process and trains our neural network. As our optimizer, we used Atom, and we used uh, uh, we, we, we did this process for 100 iterations. 
Afterwards, we needed to calculate the model performance. We did this by calculating uh, the by calculating the residual for e at each time step of 0 0.1, uh, the the difference between our estimated solution and the real solution. We then summed up all these values to get an indication of model performance. So the higher the number, the the worse the model performed, meaning the 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 more the more the bigger the difference between our estimation and the the real solution. Uh, the smaller the sum, it means a, a better model performance. It means there was not much difference between the real solution and the solution that we predicted. So what conclusion did we reach? So in this graph here, we have our data ODE. So this is the data from which we generated our, our red dots, our, our data with which we trained our neural network. And here we have our different specifications. And here we have the total sum of residuals from 0 to 3. So as you can see, when your specification is, is equal to the data ODE, you, you get the, the smallest um, error. You get the best model performance. Um, another example is uh, here at sine of t. We get a, a very small, uh, a very good model performance, a very small residual sum of 0 0.06, whereas if we were to use perhaps uh, exponential, e to the power of t, we get a, a bad model performance. However, what was interesting to me is that uh, sometimes using uh, incorrect specifications can sometimes produce better results than no specification. Uh, an example here is if, if we look at the data generated by t squared, and if we use e to the power of t as our um, specification, we actually get a very small uh, residual here, which is much smaller than actually if we used uh, no specification. So this model, so so this specification produces a better model than no specification, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, regardless, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Giulio Dalla Riva for helping me with this research project, and I would also like to enormously thank Chris Rakakis for all the resources he he has put out there for me to learn this material. Uh, it's thanks to him that I, I managed to obtain so much of the code. Uh, and learn so much about universal differential equations. So thank you very much, Chris. And I'd also like to thank uh, Andre Hungar and Connor Smith for helping me look over and, and make sure everything was uh, with right with the presentation. So thank you very much.